So what's the best way to connect your Quest headsets to the PC to play Cyberpunk? Hey everybody, Dr. Greg here with another Cyberpunk vid. I know it's been a while, but I've been really busy with Prey Dog's UEVR mod, so you know, cut me some slack. <laughs> anyway, uh, as you may or may not know, I'm very, very much a PC VR guy. I've uh, had all the Quest headsets, including the three now, but I barely touched them. By the way, I just want to give out a huge shout out and uh, tip my hat to all of you content creators that only use the Quest headsets. Every time I try to create any content with one of these things, I leave with higher blood pressure and less hair. <laughs> but I digress. I get varying reports from people about how the game looks to them and their Quest headsets from amazing to a steaming pile of dog poo. So I got myself a Quest 3 and I decided to see what people were talking about. And I gotta say, I can see why people are having differing opinions. And also, I'm mortified that this is how so many of you have experienced Cyberpunk in VR. So, we're gonna go through different methods to connect your headset to the, uh, or your, your Quest to the PC, starting from the worst and working our way up to the best. Also, all of the recorded footage here was captured on the Quest 3, so you can see what I am seeing in the headset. So, let's go. All right, before I begin, I'm just going to say up front that for the best experience you can have in VR with Cyberpunk, you're going to need an actual PC VR headset, preferably a big screen beyond, which I reviewed with Cyberpunk in this video here. And also, uh, this is another duh kind of statement, but you're going to want the best PC that you can get. The higher end the PC, the better your experience. And that's not coming from an elitist place, just a straight up fact place. So the first method I decided to try is death the worst, and that is Airlink. I had tried Airlink with Cyberpunk when I first got my Quest 3, and that is when I left mortified. It's just straight up ugly. The image compression is just horrible, which leaves all kinds of ghosting and haloing and artifacts and glitchy graphics and Unfortunately, I could not get any recording of this because when I tried and tried to use Airlink, all I got was this, a black screen. And what you can't see was the little three loading dots in the middle of the screen just going back and forth over and over again. But anyway, Airlink is dead to me. Never use it, it's terrible. And uh, this brings us to the second worst, Steam Link. So first you will need to download steam link app on your quest 3 okay now i've tried a few native vr games with steam link like alex and it ran smooth and looked gorgeous with no discernible image compression i was super impressed but it didn't work well at all with flat vr games like outlast trials with the uevr mod i had terrible frame rates and glitchy graphics so it's probably not going to work well with cyberpunk either right well with Steam Link and Cyberpunk, if I try to launch the game from the physical desktop, I get the game playing on a big 2D window in the Steam home environment. And if I try to launch the game from the Steam VR desktop, it actually acts like it's hooked. I can see the real VR mod overlay stuff on the top of the screen, but all I get is the game sound and a black screen. So. It's slightly less terrible than Airlink, <laughs> but I would still take this over Airlink if Airlink was working, uh, just because Airlink was so bad. Now, I've heard some people say that they got this game working with Steam Link. I don't know how, you know, computers, one PC doesn't exactly act like another. But anyway, for me, Steam Link is also a no. Okay, the third method is actually pretty good, virtual desktop. Now you'll have to pay for the app. Most people probably already have. And if you have it, I think it's like 14 bucks on the app store. So it's not terrible. Uh, you'll also have to download the virtual desktop stream client, which is linked in the description and have that running before you start virtual desktop. Now open virtual desktop in your headset and connect to your computer. You'll want to change some of the settings in Virtual Desktop, so press the left menu button on your Quest controller so you can get to those. I have my settings at 80 FPS, uh, which is all the higher you really want to go if you're using AAR2 with Luke's mod, uh, and the desktop bitrate set to 74 or so. Uh, that should give you a very smooth experience. Now, don't launch Cyberpunk from Virtual Desktop, from where you would, the app tells you to launch games from. Instead, you can either launch it from the desktop you can see in your headset or from the physical desktop. Otherwise, you'll probably just get a 2D window of the game. 
you're probably safest launching from your physical desktop, to be honest. Uh, but as you can see, the game runs nice and smooth. It looks pretty good. There's quite a bit of artifacting and haloing around the edges of characters, especially in areas with effect like steam coming up from the ground where it collides with characters. But it's acceptable uh, for anyone that doesn't have a PC VR headset and wants to play wirelessly. All right, so the uh, fourth is obviously the best method, and that is a uh, high speed USB 3 link cable. Now, the official cable on the Quest Store is outrageously priced. It's like 99 bucks or something like that. I think it's fiber optic all the way through, which is why it's so expensive. Um, and it's USB-C on both sides. And I don't know too many people out there that have USB-C ports on their PC. Um, I found this Syntec cable that's made specifically to connect to the Quest 3. It's USB-C to USB-A, so it connects easily to your computer for like 17 bucks or something like that on Amazon, and it's working great. This allows you to directly link your PC, and then you will have the PC Oculus software to run from. So first, go to Oculus Home Software and click on Device uh, on the left and bring up your headset. Click on the little arrow next to your Quest 3 and go to your Graphics Preferences and click that. Change your refresh rate to 80 hertz and then max out your resolution if you can. That may de be dependent on the power of your PC. Uh, but get that res as high as you can go. And then go to C Program Files, Oculus, Support, Oculus, Diagnostics, and then open up the Oculus Debug Tool with the, the EXE. Um, from here, you will want to raise up the encode bit rate. Now, it will only let you go to 500, <clears throat> anything more than that, and it will stop you. But if you open up Notepad and type in 240 and then copy that and then paste that into the encode bitrate space, you will see that you just kind of cheated 940 into that spot. Uh, I thank HamVR out there for that little bit of advice. Uh, but anyway, now you're ready to roll. Just launch the game from the Oculus desktop or the physical desktop, and the game should hook and you are rolling. You can see that this is definitely the best looking of the methods. You still have some artifacting and compression and haloing, but not as bad as the wireless methods. If the Quest was the only headset that I had, this is the only way that I would play PC VR games. Of course, I had to show some footage from the big screen beyond here, so you could see the comparison. I will always highly recommend that if you want to play PC VR games, you need a PC VR headset for the best experience. But I do understand that uh, it's just not possible for a lot of people, which is the great thing about the Quest line. Anyway, I hope this has helped. If so, I would love it if you'd hit that like and subscribe button and mash that little notification bell so you don't miss out on all the fun. Uh, I have so much coming on the channel this year with mods and the UEVR mod, uh, just, just a lot of great times. So anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Dr. Greg, out.